Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Lord Best. That box is on there, my notes. So, I'm just going to review, I think, a little bit about what we've done in 2018. And there's been a lot going on in 2018. Uh, we obviously are very involved in policy. And there are a number of officials in this room that are also involved. So, um, if some of us, including myself, look a lot more than a year older than last year, it's because there's been a lot happening. So, we've had a new eco, refocused on fuel poverty and also encouraging innovation. We've had a reformed RHI, we've had new boiler plus regulations, um, we've had changes to the um, regulations which Lord Best mentioned on landlords upgrading properties, and there's been a whole range of other policies as well, they're just naming a few. Um, we've had a whole range of consultations with both the UK government, with the devolved organisations in Scotland and Wales, and also We've also worked with, um, I think there's representatives here from the, the West Midlands here, we've been dealing with the, um, the Metro Mayors as well. So there's been a whole range of things going on in policy. And then I think as we mentioned before, there was a heat in, heat in, in buildings, the future of heat in buildings consultation came out on Friday. Um, well, I wasn't really expecting it. So um, anyway, that, that came out on Friday and that was the government response to the consultation that had taken place in March. And what that did is it actually um, clarify, which is something I think which we already know, which is that heat in buildings is a huge challenge. It's about the greatest challenge we face in meeting our legally binding carbon targets. And this view has also been shared by the Committee on Climate Change as well, who have urged immediate action on this. So, but I would say, being positive as Rebecca said, um, heat decarbonisation is not just a challenge, it's also a huge opportunity for UK businesses, many of whom are in this room now. Um, we need to develop solutions and products, so as we've been talking about, um, and they can be marketed at home and abroad. And there was some analysis done which suggested that the low carbon economy could grow four times faster than the rest of the economy and could deliver between 60 and 170 billion of export sales by 2030. And as I said, there's a lot of people in this room who are involved with that, and they have a huge part to play in achieving that low carbon growth. We've also mentioned the Grand Challenge mission, which is to halve the energy use of new buildings by 2030. I was really encouraged when this policy came out. Um, I was invited to, to go along when the, the Prime Minister announced this, and I was encouraged by the fact that it was actually giving such a high prominence to a policy about energy in buildings, which isn't always the case. Um, the mission is a key target, and really it's something which sits at the heart of what the SAA does. Um, as Lord Best mentioned, we are publishing a report soon, which is actually going to talk about and propose how we can actually deliver that Grand Challenge mission. Um, existing homes are also obviously very important and Ron Bailey, who's, I might as well mention everyone else does, um, Ron Bailey, who uh, he's been liaising with Sir David Amos on the bill that we've um, already talked about really, which is about trying to get a firmer commitment from government on bringing all homes into the C band C. So I'd really like to thank Ron for that. Um, as we've already said, even when he gets hit by a bus, he still actually keeps ringing me at the weekend. So um, he did actually have about a, a half a day when he didn't ring me one weekend, and that was because he was in hospital. But um, Ron has worked hard with David Amos on this bill. And I'd also like to thank everybody else here who was supporting this bill, because we had more than 100 signatures on a letter to Claire Perry uh, promoting this policy, and um, people in this room a lot of you have been very supportive on this, and these things do make a difference. We're getting really good traction on this. So I was encouraged, although not satisfied, to see in the policy that came out on Friday, the future framework response, uh, there was a, a commitment to develop a comprehensive suite of policies to achieve APC and C by 2035. And I think that's probably partly as a result of the, the work Rob and Sir David Amos have been doing. We've also mentioned the Innovative Technology Skill, which is another thing we've been, Ron's been working with Rebecca on. So there's been a lot going on in 2018, but actually what we probably saw from what came out on Friday, the future of heat and buildings, is there's going to be even more in 2019. So there's going to be a consultation on the building regulations for England, hugely important uh, consultation, um, a review of, of those building regulations, which are key. There's also going to be a consultation on regulatory framework. There's going to be a consultation on skills and training for low carbon heat installers, on insulation standards, compliance, and enforcement options, which we all know is, is very important. There's also going to be a long-awaited response to the building a market for energy efficiency called weapons. 
that. So, um, and that's the sort of thing that hopefully we will have things like the, um, the policy that Lord Best talked about, about um, stamp duty and using some of those levers. We have also going to have a policy to support businesses with high energy use, transition to low carbon. And of course we've got the review of the Poly Plus regulations, which will, this year came in um, the first time since 2005 we've had regulations improving the standards for boilers, um, which is a great achievement, but there's a review this year and we want to make sure that there's a progressive policy and that there's some more changes and more improvements that want, want to wait more than 10 years for the next changes. There's also going to be a development of decarbonisation roadmap for the future of heat following the RHI, which is clearly really important. So there's quite a few officials that will be working with this year on parliamentarians. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to them. It's been a difficult year for, for parliamentarians and also a difficult year for officials who, who um, are working with them. There's been a lot of distractions, as you can probably gather from tonight. And um, I think you know those officials have carried on working really hard and trying to deliver policy. And uh, I'd like to thank them for that. We've had a lot of engagement with them and they've been very supportive. I'd also like to thank the SEA members for the support this year because without you, we wouldn't obviously be able to to do the work that we do. We're, we're working on your behalf and with your support. I'd like to thank Lord Best. Lord Best has shared his immense knowledge and insight uh, throughout the year and it's been great. As he already mentioned um, meetings with Claire Perry when the knowledge he has of housing and the sector has been really, really helpful. And um, I'd really like to thank you for that. Lord Best was, um, has come away from the Lords tonight as well, where I believe there's a vote, although I don't know no, if it's cancelled now. We've cancelled yeah. everything. Right, cancelled everything. <laughs> cancelled everything to come here tonight. Um, our Chair Richard Burnley. Um, Richard's over there. Um, Richard has got a really busy day job, as I guess a lot of us have, but Richard manages to find time to meet me regularly and talk about the Sustainable Energy Association. Um, and um, I really appreciate the support Richard gives as well. Uh, one last thank you, I think, is the SEA Secretariat. So we have a whole team of people working on this, but I'd like particularly to say thank you to Sam and Sandra, who just do an immense amount of work, and I think those of you who are involved with us will know that. Um, so thank you to them. So if 2018 has been a momentous year on a wider level as well, we saw the 100th anniversary of the end of the First World War, Peace in Europe, which is probably a bit ironic, given what's going on now. Um, we've also saw the 100th anniversary of the Representation of the People Act, which gave the right to vote to men aged 21 and women 30 or over, which was a start. Uh, 2018 saw the 10th anniversary of the Climate Change Act, which enshrined climate change targets in law and has helped to remain, which is really a remarkable cross-party consensus, with five carbon targets being approved by Parliament. This is really something, I think, what's going on at the moment that makes you realise how remarkable that is. 2018 also saw the publication of the IPCC report, which is highlighting that the biggest challenge we face is climate change and that we need to act now, otherwise it will be too late. We've also mentioned that COP24 is going on this week, where the United Nations are considering climate change. And it's great to see people like David Attenborough highlighting climate change and also the impact that this is having on the galvanising support. But I think one thing that we do need to do is galvanise more support and more awareness of energy and buildings. Uh, it's not as visual, you can't actually show pictures really of energy escaping from buildings in the same way that you can show a turtle being strangled by a carrier bag. We do need to get out there and try and get this message out. We need to get it more widely and make people realise how important energy in buildings is. So I think as we look forward to 2019, we need to learn from the past. So I think let's work together, people of all nations, parliamentarians of all parties, and member associations like the Sustainable Energy Association to tackle the huge challenge that humanity faces. And let us use the freedom we have to vote and to speak out, to hold our politicians to account, and to ensure that the legacy we leave is one that we can all be proud of. Thank you. Merry Christmas.